Thank you for watching this screencast. The objective of this screencast is learners will be able to identify the independent variable and the dependent variable for a given function graph. So here is a function graph. This is a real world function graph. The real world function graph will always compare two quantities that are related to one another in some way. In this function graph, one of the quantities being compared is the length of a sailboat. The other quantity is the maximum speed. We know this is a function because every length of a sailboat has only one maximum speed. For example, if I have a two foot long sailboat, my maximum speed is right here, about three and a half kilometers per hour. Eight feet long for my sailboat gives me a maximum speed of just about seven kilometers per hour and so forth. Every input has only one output. And for the graph of a real world function, we say the independent variable is the quantity that, if changed, affects the other quantity. It's also the one that we'll always put on the horizontal axis. In this example here, on the graph shown, the length of the sailboat is the independent variable. By contrast, the dependent variable is the quantity whose value depends on the other quantity. It's the one we graph on the vertical axis. In this example, our dependent variable is the maximum speed. We say that the maximum speed is the dependent variable because it depends upon the length of the sailboat. So for this example, which one is the independent variable? Well, we just said the independent variable is the length of the sailboat. That's the one of the two quantities that if we change it, will affect the other. We don't have control over the maximum speed of the boat. We have control over the length of the sailboat. So which is the dependent variable? Well, it's the maximum speed. Now along with this goal, our secondary goal here is to be able to also use the graph to interpret some information. So here are some other questions that we want to try to answer using the graph we're given. Look at C. True or false? The longer the sailboat is, the faster it can travel. Well, let me look at what happens if I increase the length of the sailboat. As I pick a bigger and bigger length of the sailboat, What's happening to the maximum speeds? Let's just pick a few and look at them. When the length of the boat is 4, we've got a maximum speed of about 5. When we go to 8, our maximum speed is about 7. It's greater, isn't it? If I go to 12, then we're actually somewhere in between 8 and 9. Maybe we'll say like 8 and 2 thirds or something like that. You know, that seems true. The graph seems to show that as the sailboat gets longer, its maximum speed will increase also. We're going to say that's true. So let's look at Part D then. Part D says for a boat to reach the speed of 10 kilometers per hour, it needs to be at least how many feet long? Well, let me see if I can find 10 kilometers per hour on the graph. You know, kilometers per hour is a speed, so it should be somewhere here on the vertical axis. How about right here? Right there is 10 kilometers per hour. The question is, how long does the boat need to be? Let's see if we can use the graph to figure it out. It looks like I see that point right there. How about an answer of about 16? It must be at least 16 feet long to reach a speed of 10 kilometers per hour. Okay, this is the first screencast you watch for Algebra 1, so you may not know what I want you to do when you see this screen. The screen says pause and check. Uh, what I have for you is an item. In this case, I actually have it broken down into two screens. 
But what I want you to do is I want you to pause the video when I'm done speaking. I want you to try to answer these questions on your own. And then when you think you've got it figured out, I want you to hit play and give yourself feedback. So go ahead and hit pause now and see if you can answer the questions. Okay, let's check it out. This is a function graph that is all about the H1N1 virus. And on the horizontal axis, we have the number of days since the outbreak of the virus began. And on the vertical axis, we have the number of reported cases. So, for example, about seven days after the outbreak was reported, we've got somewhere between zero and half of 4,000 is 2,000. I would say maybe that's about 1,000 ballpark. 1,000 cases or so, seven days after the outbreak was reported. The question here is, which variable is the independent variable? Well, that's the one on the horizontal axis. Uh, it would be the number of days since the outbreak. Which variable is the dependent variable? Well, that's the vertical axis of the graph. That's the number of reported cases of H1N1. The number of reported H1N1 cases. Okay, here comes part two of the guess of the pause and check now. Okay, here it is. Part C says approximately how many cases of H1N1 were reported 14 days after the outbreak? And then Part D says, about how many days after the H1N1 outbreak did the number of reported cases reach 10,000? Hit pause, see if you can answer both. And then when you think you've got it, hit play. How many cases were reported of H1N1 14 days after the outbreak? Where can I find that on the graph? Right there. 14 days since the outbreak is right here. So what I want to do is I want to go to this point right there when X is 14. And I want to decide roughly what that Y value is. So it might help again to look and see uh, what we have here. If this is 0 and this is 4,000, this value here would be 2,000. Exactly halfway between 0 and 400. This looks a lot closer to 4,000 than 2,000 to me. That even looks like it's more than half. So I think it should be more than 3,000. I'm going to say about 3,500. Now, if you wrote down an answer that's slightly different than mine, but still indicates that you know that that value should be pretty close to 4,000 without being at 4,000, we would give you credit for that. Part D says, about how many days after the H1N1 outbreak did the number of reported cases reach 10,000? Okay, where is 10,000 reported cases? Yeah, halfway between 8,000 and 12,000. Right there. So how many days is that? Well, it's not 21 days. And it's not 21 days, but it's somewhere in the middle. Let's say about maybe 24 days. And again, if you wrote 23, I'd buy that as an answer. If you wrote 25 or 26, you know on the graph there's no way to know specifically for sure. So you're going to have to do your best estimate and make a ballpark educated guess. Thanks for watching.